What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today we're looking at my top 10 cards from the newest set, Lost Origin, coming out on September 9th. I'll be ranking these cards based on how likely I think they are to succeed in a competitive standard format environment, but be sure to let me know what cards you're excited about from this new set. Before we get into the video, shout out to my sponsors, PotownStore.com, CardTroopergames.com, Beast Coast Pokemon, PokemonCard.io, and Dragon Shield Sleeves. You can find links, affiliate codes, and more in the description down below. And be sure to subscribe to this channel for daily Pokemon TCG content. Starting out my list with number 10 is going to be Hisuian Zorark V-Star. Hisuian Zorark V-Star is a colorless V-Star Pokemon that evolves from Hisuian Zorark V. The attack ticking curse for two colorless does 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. So if Zorak V-Star and all five of your benched Pokemon have damage on them, this will do 300 damage for two energy, or if you're using a double turbo energy to satisfy the energy cost, it will do 280. Zorak V-Star has the potential to do a lot of damage, potentially one-shotting anything in its path with the help of damage modifiers like Choice Belt, but it does take some setup to get there since you need all of your Pokemon to have damage to reach the maximum damage output. Hisuian Zorak V-Star has the V-Star power ability Phantom Star. During your turn, you may discard your hand and draw 7 cards. This is the same effect as the popular supporter card Professor's Research, and this is a fine ability. It lets you discard and draw seven, and then maybe you can use a utility supporter instead of a research. So you could maybe use something like Boss's Orders for your turn and still get that Professor's Research effect from the Phantom Star ability. It's a fine consistency ability to have on a V-Star Pokemon. It's not the most exciting thing you can do with your V-Star power for the game, but it adds consistency to the card, so... It's solid. The reason why I have Hisuian Zorak V-Star at the bottom of this list is that I think it is an above average card, but I think the other cards on this list are all better. I think this is a really powerful set and heavily focused around the Lost Zone mechanic, which Hisuian Zorak V-Star doesn't benefit from. Next at number 9, we have Radiant Gardevoir, a basic Pokemon which is Psychic and has 130 HP. Radiant Pokemon are basic regardless of their stage in the video games, and the Radiant Pokemon rule is you can't have more than one Radiant Pokemon in your deck. Radiant Gardevoir provides a really nice utility that uh, is great with defensive Pokemon. So the ability Loving Veil, all of your Pokemon take 20 less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon V, this is going to go great with something like an Arceus V-Star with a big charm that you want to just keep healing with Charon's care every turn, and Radiant Gardevoir is making you take even less damage so it's harder for the opponent to take a one-hit knockout on your Arceus V-Star. Another Pokemon V-Star that I think we'll see Radiant Gardevoir played with is Hisuian Gudra V-Star, which already reduces damage being done to itself, and Radiant Gardevoir helps it reduce damage even more. Next on our list at number 8 is going to be the first sighting of a Lost Zone mechanic Pokemon card from Lost Origin, and you will see that all of the cards having to do with the Lost Zone mechanic have this colorful aura around the illustration of the card. This Sableye has two attacks. The second one, which we're interested in, is called Lost Mine. For a Psychic Energy, you can only use this attack if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone, but you get to put 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like, which is very, very powerful. We've seen the Mewtwo V Union deck be able to use Psy Splosion to put 16 damage counters for 3 energy on a 4-piece Pokemon card that gives up 3 prize cards. Being able to do that with this small Sableye for just a Psychic Energy is very strong, and there are plenty of cards in this set that are going to help us get cards into our Lost Zone. At number 7, we have that Hisuian Gudra V-Star that I mentioned a little while ago with Radiant Gardevoir. Hisuian Gudra V-Star has 270 HP and it's Dragon type, which is very important because Dragon types in the current Pokemon TCG design do not have a printed weakness on the card, so they can't be hit for weakness. And this Gudra V-Star is trying to be a tank and never get knocked out. Rolling Iron does 200 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 80 less damage from attacks. And then the V-Star Power ability, Moisture Star, 
goes right along with that damage reduction because it lets you fully heal all damage from Hasui and Gujar V-Star. So if you use Rolling Iron a couple turns in a row and your opponent is just about ready to knock out this Hasui and Gujar V-Star, you can activate your V-Star Power Ability Moisture Star, heal all damage from the Gujra, and your opponent is right back to square one while you are rolling through with some iron. Number six is Cramorant, and Cramorant looks a little bit surprised to be this far up on my top 10 list, so let me know if you guys were also surprised to see this small, seemingly not very important Pokemon on the top 10 list for Lost Origin. Cramorant has 110 HP, it's water type, and it has the ability Lost Provisions. If you have four or more cards in the Lost Zone, ignore all energy in this Pokemon's attack costs. And Cramorant has just one attack. For Water Water Colorless, it does spit innocently for 110 damage and is not affected by weakness. This doesn't seem very impressive, but if you get to use Spit Innocently for 110 for no energy cost due to lost provisions as early as turn 1 going 2nd, that 110 damage can be the difference between winning or losing the game. You can knock out a weak Pokemon that your opponent started with, or you can get in some very important early damage on a V Pokemon that your opponent has in the active. Horus's Experiment at number 5 is going to be the first trainer card that I have on this list. Horus's Experiment is a supporter that says look at the top 5 cards of your deck and put 3 of them into your hand. Put the other cards into the Lost Zone. So this is a really great card that lets you loot through the top five cards of your deck and you get to pick the three ones that you need. So essentially those other two cards are going to be lost for the rest of the game. You can never get them out of the lost zone. But this is actually a double positive. It's essentially you get to draw three cards out of the top five and then send two to the lost zone. And both of those effects are good for you if you have this card in your deck because you want more cards in your lost zone. So players will probably run four of this in their lost zone decks and zero of it in non lost zone decks. Our first and only VMAX Pokemon on this list is Curem VMAX. At a whopping 330 HP, this water type Pokemon has an ability and an attack. The ability Glaciated World reads once during your turn, you may discard the top card of your deck. If that card is a water energy card, attach it to one of your Pokemon. This can be easily comboed with Aranguru or Rotom Phone or any other type of card that can set the top card of your deck to be something specific. The attack Max Frost costs water, water, water and does 120. Plus, you may discard any amount of water energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 50 more for each you discarded in this way. So if you discard 3 energy cards from Curem VMAX, you will do 270. And when comparing that with Ice Rider VMAX, which you can discard 2 energy from to do 250, the Curem VMAX attack costs one more to start out with, and you are also discarding more energy but it has a higher ceiling, which is technically infinite because you can discard any amount. And Ice Rider has a fixed amount, but does it for a more efficient energy cost. So in a meta of higher HP Pokemon, Hiram VMAX is probably going to be better than Ice Rider because it can reach higher numbers. But in a meta of Pokemon that settle between 250 and 280 HP, Ice Rider will probably be better because it attacks for a more efficient cost. I expect to see Kyurem VMAX played quite a bit, and I think it's a very threatening card to see on the other side of the board. On to the top three, we have Giratina V-Star as my third best card of Lost Origin. Giratina V-Star is another Dragon-type Pokemon, which means it has no weakness, and that is a really big deal for this 280 HP monster. It has two attacks, one of them which are the V-Star power on the card. The first attack, Lost Impact for Grass Psychic Colorless, does 280 damage, and you put two energy attached to your Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Attached from any of your Pokemon, it doesn't have to be attached to Giratina V-Star, but 280 damage is this attack's printed damage. That is before things like Choice Belt. That is just the base damage, and that is insane. So you'll be one-shotting other V-Star Pokemon every time without uh, HP modifiers on them. And then the V-Star Power Star Requiem for Grass and Psychic reads, You can use this attack only if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone. Your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out. 
This is obviously very, very good, and Giratina V-Star is just a powerhouse of aggressive capabilities. At number two is the item card Mirage Gate. I think you're going to be seeing this card and our number one card quite a lot in the upcoming standard format. Mirage Gate reads, you can only use this card if you have seven or more cards in the Lost Zone, and the effect is search your deck for up to two basic energy cards of different types and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. This is an incredible resource for energy acceleration. This is going to be the catalyst of so many different attackers. Giratina V-Star and Gudra V-Star's awkward energy costs don't seem that bad anymore with Mirage Gate. And there's also some older basic Pokemon like the Amazing Rares that I think we will see revitalized by this new Mirage Gate and the Lost Zone engine. Which brings us to the number one card from Lost Origin. It's Comfy. Yep, this little thing that carries flowers around, that's the number one card from Lost Origin. At 70 HP, it has the ability Flower Selecting, which I think is a play on the phrase Flower Picking. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand, the other into the Lost Zone. Why is this so good? Why is this the number one card from Lost Origin? Well, you saw all those cards that need cards in the Lost Zone. Mirage Gate, Giratina V-Star, Cramorant. Comfy is going to be the thing that helps you get there. You get to look at the top two and you pick one of those cards, so you get a positive out of that. You get a card added to your hand and you add a card to the Lost Zone. So you essentially get two positive things for the price of nothing. All the price is is having Comfy in your active. And then you can switch into another Comfy, you can scoop up Netacomfy and put it back down and retreat into it and reuse it. You can use many of these Comfy flower selecting abilities every turn if you build your deck around it and just turbo cards into the lost zone ready to let mirage gate and cramorant and giratina v star reach their full potential that's it for today but if you enjoyed the video remember to leave a like comment and subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon tcg content and follow me on twitch and twitter so you can get all of my content all the time links are in the description down below thank you guys so much for watching today have a great day and i'll see you next time here on Celio's network